Now that exclusive interview with the mother of Molly Tibbetts, the Iowa college student who was killed last year after she went for a jog. Today, Molly's 21st birthday. Her mother is sharing her story with Paula Ferris, who has that with us. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Robin. A tough interview for any parent to do. She says there are good days, there are bad days. But on this day, May 8th, what would have been Molly's 21st birthday, she wants to celebrate her life and start a movement, Molly's movement. It was indescribable, and it took a higher power to get me through it. it Laura Calderwood speaking out for the first time on camera since the body of her daughter Molly Tibbetts was discovered last summer alongside a rural cornfield. She was killed while jogging in Brooklyn, Iowa. I don't want to feel anger, um, so I just I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it at all. I mean, people have, have asked me, you know, will you ever forgive them? And I said, I haven't, I've gone nowhere near that. It was the missing persons case that captivated the nation. This morning, the FBI and law enforcement across Iowa joining the intense search to track down 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts. After a month-long search, authorities made the grim discovery, led there by her alleged killer, Christian Rivera. Mr. Rivera, did you kill Molly Tibbetts? Shortly after the arrest, Rivera was identified as an undocumented immigrant, sparking a nationwide debate on immigration and the president's proposed border wall. A person came in from Mexico illegally and killed her. We need the wall. But Tibbetts' father, Rob, immediately responded, writing an editorial. At her eulogy, I said Molly was nobody's victim, nor is she a pawn in others' debate. On behalf of my family and Molly's memory, I'm imploring you to stop. And now Molly's mother, Laura Calderwood, who has remained largely silent since her daughter was killed, has made what some call a powerful decision, offering a home to an undocumented immigrant and acquaintance of her daughter's alleged killer. It was all at her son Scott's urging. Well, Ulysses' parents were leaving town, and he is a senior, and it was very important for him and for his parents to have him finish his senior year. Um, and so Scott simply asked me on a Sunday night, um, can we adopt Ulysses? And I said, no, we can't adopt him, but if he needs a place to live, he's got one. And so he moved in the following Sunday. I knew I did the right thing, and I, you know, I saw it from the day he moved in, and I see it every day. Ulysses, or Yuli, as she calls him, now lives in the same home that Molly once did. I just hope that we've set a good example, and with all the kindness that was giving to my family and to the community, um, keep that in mind and pay that forward. And now, on what would be Molly's 21st birthday, she's rallying the community in honor of her daughter's memory, raising funds for the local opera house. Molly was very dedicated to theater arts. She was in plays um, from the time we moved. We are asking people to donate $21 in honor of Molly and that it will start a um, people thinking about paying kindness forward. And they're also encouraging people to perform 21 acts of kindness in Molly's memory today. This theater, the Brooklyn Opera House, it was very special to the family. Mm -hmm. They had volunteered there and they're just hoping that it can be fully restored, allowing Molly's spirit to continue mm -hmm. and touch others. But the mom says, I hope we're setting a good example. Oh my they goodness, are. they mm -hmm. are. They really are. are. Strong parents. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for bringing that to us, Paula. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.